I'm Dr. Keith C. Ferdinand, Professor of Medicine, the Jarl S. Barrison Endowed Chair in Preventive Cardiology at the Tulane University Medical Center, and I'm speaking to one of my patients, Larry, about his struggles with very high cholesterol. How you doing, Larry? I'm all right. How you? So this started back in 2008. You really were feeling pretty good, and you just went out? Yes, I just passed out, and like seven days later, woke up in the hospital. And they had to shock you back? They had to shock me back in the mm-hmm. later. So you had an angioplasty in 2008, and then they had to go back and do another angioplasty in 2010. Yes, sir. And your LDL cholesterols have been really high, like 222. Yes. Okay. Did they try you on cholesterol medicines back then? Yes. Um, they tried me on um, two different cholesterol medicines. I think it was a torvastatin first. A torvastatin first, and that didn't work. You couldn't work that one. Yeah. All right. And then the... Um, Azetamine. Azetamine. You couldn't and tolerate it? I couldn't tolerate that also. So okay. um, we went to an injection that came out, and that dropped it drastically. I don't know if it's where it needed to be, but it was well under 100. That was the PCSK9. And it, right. it really had just come on the market to so we were able to yes. get samples for you. Correct. Now, you have insurance. Correct. So what happened when the samples ran out? Samples ran out, and the insurance wouldn't cover it at the time. Even though you had had a heart attack, two angioplasties, went into a coma, had to be shocked back, LDL cholesterol was over 200. Correct. Couldn't tolerate the statins. Correct. And they, they still didn't give you the medicine. Correct. Okay, so how did we get it? We, um, it was like a year and a half later, after several attempts that you and your team diligently, I guess, um, contacted the prescribers, I mean the makers of that medicine, and we was able to get it, and it works well right now. <laughs> so you're doing much better? I'm doing much better with the cholesterol. So what do you think would happen if we couldn't get the PCSK9 inhibitor for you? I believe it would increase more as time went on with age. It would have probably been more of an issue than it was when I was younger than I am now. And you wonder whether or not you've been back to square one with another heart attack? Correct. Okay. Well, I think it's a case that it's important for us to do all the right things and fight for our patients to get adequate medicines. These life-saving medicines are developed, but they're not given to patients when they appropriately need it. Larry, thank you for sharing your story with us. No problem. Anytime.